just like that. Today is Thursday, August 4th. Wait, Wednesday? <laughs> Wednesday, August 4th, 2021. My name is Alex. I'm your host at the Corporate Cowboys podcast. Powered by Incorporating Associates. If you didn't know, it's our namesake. It's what we do. Today's episode is going to be on uh, on cringe. <clears throat> cringe, mad cringe. And um, its significance, I suppose. Um, how to formulate this one. Okay, here you go. This whole fucking podcast might be cringe. Or you might believe it to be cringe. That being said, you could go fuck yourself. If you believe that. Or even if you don't believe that, right? At the end of the day, um, cringe. At the end of the day, Cringe is cringe is to one person what inconvenience is to another, an inconvenience or an annoyance. <clears throat> Something that doesn't align with another person's views. If we really want to get to the root of cringe then we got to ask whether or not the action which we find cringe worthy is uh, productive to society or unproductive to society i mean if, if we want to scale that if we want to scale that we could say that uh that being unproductive or being not reproductive is cringe. Why? Because it's not uh, beneficial to society. If we were to universalize being unproductive, we're left with sloth, laziness. We're left with wasted potential. And that's pretty fucking cringe, isn't it? Every now and then, um, I'll see a meme or somebody will send me something where the point, in in, in a comedic way, I suppose, where the point is to highlight the wasted potential of of, of a character, let's say, in this meme, this hypothetical, it's a fictional character in the meme, to highlight their wasted potential or to highlight the fact that they over over did I guess an action they overreacted or they overacted overacted or overreacted and then that's supposed to be cringe why because it's uh it maligns. It's. It maligns. It, it creates a certain discord in uh, individuals, in productive individuals. I'm gonna. I'm gonna. I'm gonna call. For the sake of this um, example, I'm gonna call them normal. It's cringe for normal people. So. Watching potential be wasted, watching talent be wasted, watching, uh, you could even say, like, watching somebody get away with some, some atrocious act right under the noses of regulators and, and, and officials, you know, um, like law enforcement. I mean, law enforcement is also a pretty hot button issue. 
but watching potential be wasted or, or watching uh, watching good energy or good vibes be pissed away or shit on well that to me is cringe that to me is cringe and uh a lot of the memes that I come across or a lot of the uh, the gifts that I come across, I mean, they're educational to some extent. They're enlightening to some extent. And then others are just... are just horseshit. Downright horseshit. Where the principle trying to be universalized or the idea trying to be idealized or the deviant behavior trying to be normalized because, I mean, let's face it, if somebody's trying to normalize a behavior, then it's not fucking normal, right? That's cringe. But it gets to the point where if enough people, enough, if enough people in a society because, quote-unquote, we live in a society. If enough people in a society engage in this cringe behavior, in this cringy behavior, then it reaches a point of uh, critical mass. And then it snows, and then it snowballs. It snowballs into, uh, into a facet of mainstream culture mainstream society where it might have started as an offshoot as like a a fringe behavior I don't know what's the most recent that I could think of probably probably the stepbrother stepsis memes that I'll see every now and then like I know where they come from I'm not a fucking idiot right but for them to them for it to them be uh, glamorized, for it to them be sensationalized, that is cringe, and it's an innate feeling that someone feels where it's not so much a shudder as it is uh, a sense of repulsion. You're just repulsed by it. And now that could be a cultural thing. Culture to culture. You know? Because uh, in, in these memes, I've only I've only seen white people. Um, so, I don't know. Maybe they're more cold-headed. Maybe they're, they're more cold to the fact that they aren't blood-related. But you know, still in the same household, like, how are you gonna fuck where you sleep? Like, I can appreciate the facts, but at the same time, and evaluating it, I recognize that it's obviously not my cup of tea, and so to me, it's cringe. Does that make me a better person? Nah. I'm not gonna. I, 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 I'd say no. It makes me a more careful person because, like I said, I won't fuck where I sleep. Don't fuck where you work. Don't fuck where you study. Especially today, 2021. You can catch a case way too easy. Way too easy. Females and males are just out there for attention. If you're trying to fall in love, my suggestion is to do it early. And go in to a relationship with the plan in mind that anything you encounter, the two of you will work out together. Because there's a lot of there's a lot of uh, cringe out there, a lot of cringe, a lot of wasted potential. 
people getting into relationships and not talking to one another, not not sharing with one another, not taking on the world together. They still think they gotta keep things uh, separate. So when I say an open relationship, I mean open in communication, not open to like partner status. I mean, unless you got juice, unless you got, unless you got pimp juice, like if you have pimp juice, then uh, more power to you. But even then, you become, you become a human resources manager. And I'd, uh, again, that's not my cup of tea. As a corporate cowboy, I've met associates who've got one, two, three, or many girlfriends. And still, uh, they managed to put the work product together. So I could appreciate them for that. But sometimes the quality is a little lackluster. It's a little lackluster in quality. In terms of quality. And that might get to the point of, that, that might reach a level of just showing up to work for the check. It might have to do with more personal issues, with more social, psychological issues of uh, of gratification or satisfaction in an individual. And as a corporate cowboy, I can only do so much for my associates. But, but, I'll call them out when there's something cringe. And now before, I listed one that was personal for me, right? But if I call out cringe in a business setting, I'm not gonna call it cringe. I mean, I'm just gonna call it for what it is. It's it's gonna be bullshit or it's gonna be counterproductive or unproductive. I'm just gonna call them out on that straight up. Because if you don't, you let this shit slide and it becomes normalized. The exception becomes the rule. Where if an associate might miss a meeting one day because uh, they were out on a, on a date, right? On a date night or something. And we really needed them. We might let it slide once or twice. Otherwise, at that point, you have to you have to incorporate. Uh, <laughs> hold on, hold on, hold on. You have to come to terms with the fact that your livelihood comes from your work, comes from your productivity, comes from your success. But at the end of the day, there's a sucker born every day. Ultimately, there is a sucker born every day. And again, that could be either male or female. And there's a fuck boy and a fuck girl for everybody. Everybody can fall to that temptation. And that's what it is, ultimately. I'm not gonna say I've been the best with temptation I've fallen also lately these past couple years I've been doing really well really well and for that I have God to thank because I stay blessed I haven't caught a shell yet I've caught a couple cases but nothing crazy. So I get it when it's my time, it's my time and shit, even even death is cringe. And there is some uh, there is some cringe you have to embrace, not embrace, but you have to appreciate for appreciation's sake. You know, just just respect. Out of respect for respect kind of thing. And sometimes the cringe will let you know the type of person you're dealing with. 
the type of person you're working with, their, uh, their maturity level, their propensity for uh, quality work or mediocre work. It's all there. It'll let you know. It'll let you know what they're thinking about at the time. It'll tell you whether or not it's deserving of a, of a response. It'll tell you whether or not it needs to be addressed. Now, keeping in theme with how to uh, get over cringe, I typically just ignore it, real talk, unless it's directly and materially affecting me. I typically just ignore it. Why? Because that'll let people know that it's not normal. That it isn't normal, no matter how hard they try. Like, it just doesn't affect me. I don't respond to it. I'm not stimulated by it. So, it won't... It doesn't warrant a response on my part. It just doesn't. And in that sense, you turn cringe into awkwardness. And very few people actually enjoy being awkward. But if somebody wants to capitalize on that awkwardness and double down on their cringe, well, then they're either affecting me directly or materially. And I'm going to address it. Because if by that point I hadn't walked away, then that means we're locked in some type of business that I can't walk away from. And so my only option is to walk through. And when I mean walk through, it's going to be either on the plus or the minus side. The plus or the minus side. It's going to be for better or for worse. (laughs) Damn. Now, don't get lost in the sauce. Don't get don't get lost in the cringe. Because like I said before, everything can be cringe to somebody. Just the just the way of uh manner in which you play your cards. <clears throat> and that's from moment to moment, but don't don't get paralysis through analysis. That's not the goal of, uh, of identifying cringe. Work on yourself. Work on yourself to be better. To be productive. Because, again, it's what's counterproductive or unproductive that is cringe. If you are productive or reproductive, you know, something that's able to be reproduced for benefit's sake, for positive gain's sake, then, you know, that's not cringe. You want to be able to scale that, scale that up to uh, the societal level, up to a, a more macro level in society, in terms of culture. This is a weird episode. If you haven't visited the uh, Instagram page or if you're not a follower, go ahead, follow us. That's incorporating underscore, no wait, incorporating dot associates underscore IA. You could also subscribe to the Patreon. That's Corporate Cowboys Podcast. And if you want to donate to keep the operation nonprofit and grow it in a nonprofit manner, by all means, do that. We've got PayPal, Venmo, Cash App even. 
going to wish y'all a great weekend if you don't hear from me. Peace.